I sat and watched episode two of the Deep End series on Hulu and Freeform, and again, I want to give you my unedited response to it. So far, the series is not turning out to be what I was led to believe it would be about. After seeing the power of what I do and the people I help, I was told that the docu-series would be a hero's journey. I was led to believe that this would be about the good work I am doing in the world. A docu-series that would make people think, examine themselves, and that it would be both inspirational and truthful. That clearly didn't happen. The first episode showed some of what I do, but it was subject to an editing process that misrepresented me, my teachings, and the different alternate practices I use and teach. This second episode shows that the viewer should make no mistake. This series is not a documentary. It is billed as a docu-series, but it is designed as entertainment. It is tabloid. It is dramatic, focusing on my personal life and character at the expense of my professional mission. It is ominous and spooky. Just listen to the music. It's a combination of Friday the 13th and The Shining. If they had used upbeat music, it would have left a different, non-threatening impression. Music is used in video productions to get the viewer to feel a certain way about what is happening in the scene, on the screen. Here they chose music that left the impression that I am a bad person, a cult leader. And as a result, it was very hard for me to watch. They are trying to tell stories that didn't happen. For example, the series seems to be trying to build the impression that I was jealous of Juliana. This new episode showed a scene that appeared to be me secretly watching her and Blake walking and talking. But that didn't happen. The footage of me secretly watching them was shot at a different time in a different place. They were cut together to make it look like something happened that never did happen. And it was done to support a dramatic narrative of a story that is pure fiction. This episode introduces Molly as the private investigator. And in this episode, she says that it is her job to find out if this is a cult or not. That is actually not her job. And she was hired by me. She is not an independent investigator. Since this episode, once again, delved into suicide without much context, let me remind you that based on statistics, the truth is that my methods are more effective at helping those who are potentially suicidal than conventional methods. Also, it is important to know that other cultures and religions use some of the same criticized techniques that I myself am trying to get adopted into the mainstream mental health system. The Dalai Lama himself says analysis of death is not for the sake of becoming fearful, but to appreciate this precious lifetime. This second episode barely touched on my teachings and instead focused on my personal life. And there it misrepresented my personal life in important ways. If you happen to watch it, please understand that what they showed isn't what we do. It doesn't represent how we think and it doesn't represent how we live. It's a collection of more negative selective editing out of context and even out of order to create entertainment. What bothers me is that they present what you are watching as truth when it isn't. And it's easy to prove these untruths. Let me give you some concrete examples. First of all, I want to talk to you about the set. Where the episode takes place, like the set for any Hollywood movie, this set for this episode is an illusion. While I support intentional community, I myself actually live in an ordinary house with my son, partner, and my personal assistant. In fact, Blake moved into his own apartment nearby in preparation for Juliana's arrival, and so, surprise, surprise, Juliana, Blake, and I never even lived together. And all the other people I consider part of my community live in their own apartments in the same city. The rolling hills and that mansion they keep showing it was the location of a week-long completion process training and a week-long curveball retreat. Not my life and not my home. But you'd never know it watching this TV show. They make it look like I live on a commune. In the second episode, they show an interview with a man named Jared Dobson. They make it seem like Jared was just a wronged follower of mine 
who was not paid for his services. The reality is that Jared was my boyfriend for a short time. He offered to help me with my business, and I was happy to have his help. The relationship didn't work out. For reasons you can probably figure out by listening to what he says. So what you are watching is an interview with a disgruntled ex-lover of mine. Let's round up your exes. You know, from the relationships that didn't end well and ask them how they feel about you. Notice that they never bothered to talk to any of my exes who I have a good relationship with still and who are still friends to this day. Also, I want to make myself crystal clear. I never told him that he should go kill himself. That did not happen. Remember that my life's work is trying to help people to not commit suicide and commit to life instead. But this interview with Jared provides some context for what my fear was about in the hot tub scene from episode one. As a celebrity, anyone who comes into my life automatically has a platform. And to tell you the truth, it is terrifying because conflict is an inevitable part of any close relationship. Yet it feels like I can't afford to have a conflict with anyone because instead of resolving things, they can just turn against me publicly to find both attention and validation. Almost everything in this episode is edited and presented to make all the characters, most especially me, come across in the exact way they wanted us to come across to the audience, negatively. I'm gonna be the first to call it out. The way they have put together this episode makes all of us look nuts. There was a carefully edited scene in this episode which makes it seem like Blake and I have some kind of immoral sexual relationship going on behind Juliana's back and that we are trying to keep it a secret from Juliana. It makes it look like I'm saying that we have a special relationship behind closed doors. That is not true. Blake was dealing with sexual attraction toward me at that time. I took it as a compliment, as I imagine it would be for any woman. However, in that interaction, I was encouraging him to not ruin his relationship with Juliana, who we all loved and cared about, by telling her that he was sexually attracted to me. Because that would have been a recipe for absolute disaster. Also, unnecessary. I was advising a close friend. He had chosen to be in a committed relationship with Juliana and to marry her, which, as you could tell by my reaction, was something I thought was great. Also, as an interesting side note, I was in, and still am in, the same committed relationship at the time that scene was filmed. As a side note, all relationships are different. Be careful not to judge a relationship just because it doesn't fit inside a box. Blake is a physically affectionate guy, what some people call touchy-feely. He was physically affectionate with me for the 18 years we were close, before he chose to strike out on his own and find a different life but physical affection is different than a sexual relationship. Blake and I did not have a sexual relationship after our romantic relationship ended over 17 years ago. And Juliana was fully aware when she came into this life in America that physical affection was an element of my relationship with Blake. It was not a secret, and at that point, she had agreed to it being fine and was quite physically affectionate herself. Fourth, Okay, you guys, do you honestly think that if this is an accurate depiction of me or of what my trainings and retreats are really like, that I'd have so many people who follow me and come to my events again and again? Do you really think if this was the truth, so many people would say that my work has saved their life? I would be the first person to tell you not to go to a workshop or retreat like the one they have depicted on the screen. The thing is, my retreats and workshops are not like what they are depicting on the screen. Notice that they only show you part of any interaction that occurs at my events, and out of context, which serves what appears to be a predetermined narrative. And notice how they fail to depict any form of resolution or healing that is achieved at all of my workshops. There is no storyline about anyone who the director and producers watched go through my process. I want you to hold the phone there. It's a show about my work, and there isn't a single person yet that they followed from beginning to end of the process, so as to show the process of healing. Yet they go to great lengths to discredit the people 
who have been vulnerable enough to allow themselves to appear on film by selecting tiny clips carefully edited out of lengthy interviews, which paints them in an inaccurate light as being weak, insane, lost, powerless, easily manipulated, and like they can't think for themselves. What an insult. And yet again, what does that tell you? And this brings me to my last point for this episode, and it is the one that upsets me the very most. It is critical for healing work of any kind to be done in a safe space. When a group of people open themselves up by allowing their most intimate and vulnerable processes to be seen, only to find those processes depicted in a different way than they actually occurred or twisted to fit a negative narrative about them or the person leading them through that process, it is damaging to the most sensitive parts of them. That is just not right. All this being said, I'm not really looking forward to watching the next episode. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel and consider sharing this video with your friends. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified of the next time that I post a video. I want to thank you personally for the bravery that you have to step into awareness. I'll see you in the next video.